You chose you chose to paint. Yes. When you move the brush, is it the same as when you explore a character? No. No. When you're exploring someone else, like you may, I may say that's a character, but I don't have to portray that character. The paint has to portray it. So it's up to me to kind of translate what I'm getting from that person to the paint. And once it's done that, I can leave it alone. You don't have to repeat it for a year. Yeah. I want you to paint this painting every night for a year. Yeah. Rick? And don't change the colors. It's 8 o'clock. Get up there, paint the painting. Yeah. And it's not, being, it's not me being judged. It is to a certain extent, but it's the painting. It's a separate entity now. And I think it's that standing away from it rather than being the focus of the art. The art is hanging on the wall. It's not me up there sweating my butt off or you know, sweating my upper lip. It's just, it's, I can actually be an observer too. Right, right. So that's what it is. So for a theater that you didn't really, you have a different attitude to the theater than I do, which is all fine and good. Did you always want to be an actor? How did that happen? Ah, yeah, it's a, it kind of came for me. Um, I was, I played basketball in high school. Not very well. I was like a fifth string. But I could spin the ball on the end of my finger, and it looked like I knew how to play the ba a game of base basketball. I can see that when you did the Mikado in the specificness of the focus and the skill of your elbows and shoulders, I can see how you could spin a ball. Uh -huh. You have that kind of finesse physically. Well, it, it, was, it was fun. It really, girls like that. <laughs> and that's the point of where I'm going. <laughs> so I thought, then the teacher said, well, look, we're doing a show. Oh, okay. And uh, it was the shooting of Dan McGrew, and I got to play the bartender. That's all. Just, you know, pour the drink. That was it. And that was my first introduction to theater, the shooting of Dan McGrew. And then from that, uh, I was asked to go to the, the drama festival. And because they'd see me as the bartender, they said, look, I don't, maybe they thought alcohol. I want you to play the drunk in, in the background, but we want to really enliven the scene. So, you know, you can do whatever you want, just get that scene going. So I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, so I just started having fun. And then I got singled out by the drama board. I said, who was that drunk? You know, I said, but it's a drunk, you know, the best thing an actor can have is play a drunk. That and a death scene, those are the things actors live for, you know. So, and then I got another offer, and I said, oh, sure. I wasn't thinking any serious about it. This is in the high school drama club, is that high right? High school, yeah, okay. just being asked to come in because they didn't have a lot of people. But then I started meeting girls because of it, and I said, this is the reason I got into this. And I started dating a couple of girls who were in the drama club, and, and it was great. And I said, I think I like this drama stuff. <laughs> it wasn't the esoteric part of being, you know, involved the lofty, lofty ideals of being involved in the art. No, it was pure visceral, it was sexual. Mm. Isn't that behind a lot of theater? I know someone else who went down that path. <laughs> <laughs> who would that be? <laughs> I don't know anyone. Who got to kiss, girl, kiss the girls on stage because they couldn't kiss them in real yeah. life? Well, like, whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. But you could, you could transport people in, in a crazy so, yeah. sort of way to make you believe that you're somebody else, and in turn that made them more attracted to you, yeah. Because you, I guess, were getting attention. I was getting attention, but it wasn't necessarily the attention I wanted, yeah. except from the girls. Go figure. Yeah. <laughs>